Misinformation surrounding COVID-19 and vaccines has been widespread since the illness began making headlines around the globe. But the virus isn't the only victim of misinformation. In the first of a three-part series on this misinformation, our Katie Koppel speaks to a local professor who knows a thing or two about fake news. A report just came out recently that showed that 65% of vaccine misinformation comes from 12 people on social media. It's not just false information on the vaccines making rounds online. From politics to pizza shops, no topic is spared. Misinformation is anything that's designed to try to put doubt in people's minds about the truth. David Elder is a professor at Morningside University and specializes in misinformation and propaganda. Not only how it spreads, but how to identify it, like making sure the information is from a credible source. To have a credible source, you need to make sure that there's an author. You need to make sure that they have the right background in order to have some sort of opinion on this thing. Misinformation has taken on a new meaning in the age of COVID-19. The spread of misinformation maybe used to be something about, oh, this celebrity's dating that celebrity, and there's not that much of a consequence. But now it's misinformation about things that can save your life and can save your neighbor's life and your friends and your family. But what exactly is considered misinformation? Anything that tries to undermine the sort of the veracity or the trust that people have in that kind of information would be considered misinformation. Elder says misinformation has been around for a long time. The biggest thing is to be aware of sort of the erosion of trust in expertise over the last, I don't know, 30 years, maybe longer. I think what we're seeing now is that there's more dire consequences. This is literally life and death for people. So what can you do to combat misinformation? There are a few things. Do your own research. If something seems off or too good to be true, find an expert in that field to verify the information you are consuming. Get your news from a trusted source and multiple sources if possible. In the end, it's all about making sure the information you see is reliable and accurate. The fact that all of that information proliferates so much just goes to show how the spread can happen quickly and just at an enormous rate and, and size. In Sioux City. Katie Koppel, Siouxland News. Tomorrow in part two of our three-part series, we speak to a microbiologist who specializes in immunity to learn more about how vaccines are developed and how they work with our immune system.